Assassin's Creed Odyssey is here, and you might have forgotten what happened in the last 500 games. Let's get you caught up right now. Assassin's Creed is about the Brotherhood of Assassins, which was founded in 47 BCE in Rome to oppose the Templar Order. The Templars want to find magical artifacts to brainwash humanity and bring peace. The Assassins would rather have autonomy. So they're, they're fighting, they're fighting through all time. During the Renaissance, an artifact called the Apple of Eden is discovered by a fuckboy named Ezio. His dad and brothers are murdered, which sucks, but then he gets to become an assassin, which rules. The Templars are also looking for the apple and they want to use it to open a vault that's underneath the Vatican. And the Pope's staff is also a piece of Eden and the Pope is a Templar and Ezio has to punch the Pope a lot. But oh no, when they open the vault, there are no people pieces of Eden in there. Instead, there is a hologram of a being named Minerva, who it turns out was part of a pre-human race, also called the Isu, which stands for Iowa State University. The hologram people created humans and used them as slaves by mind controlling them using the apples of Eden, and then they went to war with each other. And then there was a gigantic solar flare that almost wiped out everyone on the planet. So that is all the exposition we get from Minerva. Ezio's apple ends up in a vault in the temple of Juno. Remember that name. Years later, in the modern day, a loser named Desmond is kidnapped by a company called Abstergo and forced to reenact the lives of his ancestors, Altair and Ezio, who both encountered apples during their lifetimes. He finds out that Abstergo is just a front for the Templars and they're using him to track down where the apples and other cool artifacts ended up. Abstergo's evil deeds are made possible by the Animus, a big old device that lets people relive history. In the early games, you could only relive the lives of people that were directly related to you, but sci-fi hand-waving, technology getting better, later you can relive the life of anyone that you have a DNA sample from. By being in the Animus so much, Desmond starts to be affected by the bleeding effect. Essentially, Ezio's skills are bleeding into him, and he can now use Assassin's Eagle Vision, and also parkour. But Eagle Vision is the relevant thing here. He starts to see hidden messages that say the world is going to end in 2012. The messages claim that Abstergo is going to launch a satellite with, like, with an apple in it and they'll brainwash humanity and make them docile, but I don't think that that ever goes anywhere. Desmond is rescued by the assassins. They figure out that there's going to be another massive solar flare and the world might end. So they all go to the Temple of Juno to grab that apple. On the way there, Desmond runs into... Hey, a precursor named Juno, who is very, very negative about mankind in general. He's gotta stop the world from ending. And then they all go off to the precursor's grand temple. Inside the grand temple, Juno is back, baby. And she tells Desmond, go ahead, activate this thing and save the world. And then Minerva's like, actually, if you do that, you'll die. And Juno will be free to go and take over the world, which is what she's literally always wanted to do. Desmond commits a very brave act of self-sacrifice and activates the thing and dies. And people have never gotten over it. Guess what? We're not done because Abstergo desecrates Desmond's corpse and takes his DNA. And here's where everything gets super meta. Abstergo, which again is the Templars, have started making Animus gaming consoles so that everyday gamers can find Izu artifacts in their history simulations. It's Ubisoft. Meanwhile, there's another group of people called the Sages who are reincarnations of the Precursors. Juno's husband, is one of these. And he tries to get a human body to put Juno in so that she can walk around and stuff, but she is still too weak. She can only go online, which is what hell is. Sages have their own damn agenda. The Templars and the Assassins then have a scuffle over an artifact called the Shroud, which can make people immortal. The Templars want to use it to give Juno a body and they win that scuffle. So they have the Shroud now. But Juno has her own plans for the Shroud. I'm not quite sure what they are. The modern day storyline now follows a woman named Layla Hassan, who was working for Abstergo, but she used an animus without permission and they got super freaked out and tried to kill her. But because of the bleeding effect, she killed them. She's taken in by the assassins and she's going to continue her research into history by going to ancient Greece. Done. Now you know everything you need to know going into Assassin's Creed Odyssey. 
Layla Hassan will be your entry point into that game. And who knows where Juno is, because she didn't really show up in the last one. And every time some sci-fi weirdness happens, you can just smile and nod. We did it, folks! We finished the video! If you liked it and you want to see more videos about Assassin's Creed Odyssey, uh, you can watch this video about gameplay. And if you like gameplay, I bet you want to see some videos about gameplay mechanics. You should watch our series about mechanics that feel very good. Thanks, and don't forget to subscribe.